Okay, you can see the situation right here where the ship is kind of riding along the line here and it's jittering a little bit. And what's going on there is the velocity is being corrected as it should be, but the correction was such that the ship was not able to get back in bounds. So every frame the ship goes, am I out of bounds? Yes, fix the velocity. Am I out of bounds? Yes, fix the velocity. Am I out of bounds? Yes, fix the velocity. It never gets back in bounds and so we get this shaking effect and, and the ship is stuck to the line, which is obviously not ideal. We want a situation always where if the ship goes out of bounds, we always put it back in bounds as well as correct the velocity. So let me show you how we're going to cheat and do that. I'm going to white out the screen here and get the, the pen. Let's just say this is the wall that the ship was hitting. It's one of four walls that make up our terribly looking diamond here. But that's one wall and the ship the ship, its velocity took it into the wall, and we said, ah, all right, let's 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 take the velocity out of the wall. And generally, it will work that our ship goes in, we move it in, oh, there's a collision, change the velocity, move the ship out, and we're just fine. But in extreme scenarios, especially with floating point arithmetic, which isn't perfect, if our ship moves from here right on the edge and comes in, and we say change the velocity, and so the next step it will take is right there maybe right in the line just not far enough then the ship will get stuck on the line and jitter back and forth so there's two ways to handle that one we could actually put the ship in the correct position but remember our ship is moving mirror pixels on our screen so the way i wish to cheat in this video to solve this problem is say okay if there's a collision all right let's let's take the ship and move it according to its velocity and if there's a collision yes Let's fix the velocity, but let's put the ship back to where it was. Okay, it's a cheap fix. It's not technically perfectly correct physically, but it's mere pixels. The user won't notice it, and it will be quick in development time. So one thing to learn from that is sometimes games, we do it right, and sometimes it's just smoke and mirrors. And if it looks right, it is right, at least as far as games are concerned. Now, if you're doing some simulation for... I don't know, airliners or something like that, then you definitely want to do it the correct way. And that would involve some more dot products and projection, but we're just going to cheat and and uh, do my little position fix-up trick anyway. Let's look for our position update code. I, our code's getting long enough. I think I'm going to just uh, collapse all of this. Control-M-O collapses all that. Let's look at, uh, I know when we call handle boundaries... Handle boundaries. We update velocity handle boundaries and we integrate. This is where we say ship position, move the velocity times the clock last elapsed last lap time. Uh, I'm going to put a temporary variable up here. It's starting to smell bad. Uh, we'll fix this a little bit later. Do some refactoring. That, that would probably be good. Sh old ship position. I'm going to copy that. And right here, I'm going to say old ship position gets ship position. We'll save away the current position of the ship. We will shall move the ship forward before handling boundaries. And then back in our handle boundaries code, I hit F12 there to jump to that. Then if the dot result is less than zero, meaning we have a collision, let's fix up the velocity and put the ship back to where it was. Ship position gets old ship position, and that will handle our position placement. Let me fly this around. And actually, before I did that fix, it took me a while to make the ship actually stick to a wall, so I'd have to play this for a while. Also, I want you to notice it looks like the ship's moving faster sometimes when it bounces, but all we're seeing there is units. Again, we we don't have a perfectly scaled one-to-one -one screen. If I make this real small, you'll see the ship zooms across the screen. And that's because our units are not the same vertically as they are, are horizontally. Let me draw this again. I know I've drawn it several times, but it doesn't hurt. This is the y-axis, positive 1 and y, negative 1 and y, and then the x-axis, ooh, big long stretch, positive 1 in the x, negative 1 in the x. So you can see the x-axis going from 0 to 1 on the y-axis is not as far as going from 0 to 1 on the x-axis simply because we've set up our our playing field in screen coordinates right now. We're 
using screen coordinates we'll fix that later but that's why when the ship moves on the x-axis it looks like it's moving extremely fast but it's actually not moving any faster um, at least as far as units are concerned than it is the other direction we can actually prove that by showing the magnitude of the velocity every time we we have a frame let's let's actually do that just for tickles I think right here I'm going to say Q debug. We'll just print Q debug, and out we'll send the ship velocity dot magnitude. We'll just print that to the screen every frame, just so we can prove that the actual real velocity of the ship doesn't change. And I'm going to make this this window squarish. So let's get this going, and you can see it doesn't really seem to move faster in any direction because our window is squarish and we have this velocity of 0.87 units and whatever units we're using we're using screen units right now 0.87 per second but if I stretch this out and shorten its height you'll see yes when the ship moves across the screen horizontally it, it seems to go really fast but the velocity still maintains so anyway don't, don't let that bother you too much we'll probably fix that in a future video but we have some other cooler things to work on in the meantime